Hi guys and welcome back to part 2 of the Slovenian trip. You might want to check out part 1 before you continue to watch this or it will not make a whole lot of sense. So, I left you last week with the thunderstorm rolling down through the valley. It really was an impressive sight with the gathering clouds and we were treated to both sheet and forked lightning shows. The weather can change on a sixpence here and Ian and I were caught out earlier in the day with a fairly heavy downpour. Yeah, there's too bad not so many anymore here. Hey, ah, come on. Ah, wrong, 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 oh, wrong spot. No, he had one on. <laughs> he missed it. Come on, old man, you're getting slow. Still, it was a welcome relief from the heat initially, and it did seem to stir the fish up. After we had said our farewells to Leslie, we formulated a plan for the next day. One of our friends, Sean Watkins, had been out fishing prior to us arriving. We managed to meet up in Tomlin for a drink and both him and his pal Igor regaled us with fishing tales from their week's adventures. Sean had kindly given us some pointers of where to try and we spent the evening wondering if the rain would ever stop. More importantly, my main concern was that the rivers would all come up. I needn't have worried and was assured by our host Tomas that it would take several days of this kind of weather to impact the rivers here in the Socha Valley. With the rain forecast to stop in the afternoon, we headed to the Baca River. This is a tributary of the main Socha. The rain was relentless, but Ian and I managed to get access to the river. Almost straight away we could see fish close into the bank. Of course, seeing fish and tempting them to take your fly are two different things. Having both had a crack, we decided to push downstream a little. It was at this point I was wishing I had brought my wading staff. Ian appropriated a sturdy tree branch to help him negotiate the slippery bottom. We worked our way downstream to some lightly runs, both finding feeding fish, much to our delight. The stamp of fish was incredible and although we hooked many, the fish often got the better of us by getting into fast water or where the flow was super strong. We soon learned that the best way ahead was teamwork. If one of us hooked a fish, then the other would try and get over and downstream to net the fish. We were having a ball despite the rain and it looked like it was starting to subside anyway. As we made our way back upstream ready for a spot of lunch, Ian directed me to an easy out. This is always welcome when you've been wading up trying to find a way to get back onto always the bank. Always holding the camera when you're crossing the river. <laughs> but this is where my dignity and most of the rest of me floated downstream again. I was only five foot from the bank. Despite being up to my chest, I thought I could make it. But the rivers are so clear and you can see the bottom. It didn't look that deep, but the quick shuffle didn't work. Much to Ian's amusement and not to mention the family that had just ventured out to set up the Sunday barbecue, I just managed to grab my cap as it floated off my head. Soaked head to toe, it was time to head back to the accommodation for a hot drink and a dry out. By this time though, the sun had burned its way through the clouds and drying out was not going to be a problem. Later in the afternoon we ventured back down to a bit of the socha that we had looked at earlier, hoping for an evening rise. We were not disappointed. The fish were up and on it. I was having some success with a size 16 unsinkable sedge. Ian was doing better with a fly that I did not have and could not even identify, much to his great enjoyment. Hindsight is a great thing and I wish we had stayed till it was dark. But the clouds were gathering once more and we decided to call it quits while we were still dry. There was still a day to go. I had booked Euros Christian for the last day of our fishing. He was the guide that I had hired the year before and we got on like a house on fire. I was really looking forward to seeing him again. But when I rose, the rain was bouncing six inches off the roof tiles. I received a message from Euros he was confident that he could put us on to fish, 
but warned that it was going to be a hard slog with the weather the way it was. After giving it some thought, we decided to let Euros off the hook and go it alone on the Adritza River. And it was to turn out to be a great decision. As much as I would have enjoyed meeting up with Euros again, it would have been incredibly difficult to make a video given the way the weather was. In what can only be described as torrential rain, Ian Cotton lost three fish in his first 15 minutes. Bad angling Ian? I had spotted some nice fish in a lovely run below a bridge and spent no small amount of time trying to tempt them. Ian had pushed on past me and was picking fish up steady away. Try as I might, I couldn't tempt the fish that were right before my eyes and I threw the kitchen sink at them. Heavy bugs, light bugs, dry fly, I even popped a streamer across their heads, but to no avail. In between the heavy rain, the scenery was breathtaking and I found myself more than once just looking up the river to the mountains. The good news was I had remembered my wading stuff. The bad news was it was broken. Another head and hands moment for me. I did take a leaf out of Ian's book and found a sturdy stick to aid me. I caught up with Ian and we worked our way up the river. Plenty of room for two anglers. We were having a great time. Despite the weather, as the afternoon pushed on, we decided to call it a day. Just as the weather started to turn nice again. On the way back to the accommodation, we had one last stop off on the Socha River for a few casts. It was a great way to finish off the trip. We had to get back and try and dry out our stuff before packing and heading home. I was going to be well over the weight, but Ian had a fix for that, but that's another story. I hope you've enjoyed these two videos. I can't help but feel I have not done Slovenia justice. The country is a fly fisherman's paradise, and I will be returning for sure. Hi there, just a little message to Lindsay. I'd just like to say thank you very much mate, it's been a wonderful holiday, we've had some great times, um, caught a lot of fish which is great. Uh, I'm beginning to know now what Jock Kettles feels like after he's won the Kit Kat Cup so many times on the trot. Um, it's the first time I think I've ever managed to beat Lindsay uh, four days consecutive fishing. Uh, I've really enjoyed that part of it I must admit. Uh, we've had some lovely fish, biggest one we've had so far I think is about four and a half pounds, uh, great fish, um, I just want to say thanks Lindsay mate, it's been a great holiday and I've learnt a lot and I look forward to coming back again one day, thank you. Of course I'm the one that walks back and picks the camera up. You got, you got taken by a big fish, huh? you see that? <laughs> Thank you.